Right. The ch I have it. Somebody has suggested chapter or question. The answer is the question. Uh, there was a study done of, this, of the ISAT and of questions that were wrong. A huge percentage of the wrong answers were simply because the question was misread. Never let that be an issue for you. So read and reread the question. The next thing you do is turn the question into a blank. This will serve as your thesis statement. What should you turn the question into? A pelican? What? A claim. Right, make a claim. So if it says, is cliff jumping a good activity, some of you are going to claim, yes, it is a good activity. Some of you will claim, or no, you would, so you would say, yes, or cliff jumping is a wonderful way to spend an afternoon. And some of you will write, cliff jumping is a very bad a idea. I think you should all say it's a really bad idea. I just want to make that clear. And the only reason, I, I'm going to take it aside here. This book, Jumping the Nail, is obviously about cliff jumping. And we've talked about that a little bit already with some nonfiction background information. I would not teach this book to eighth graders if I lived in California. Can you guess why not? Because there, there are a lot of cliffs there. We don't live in California. There are no cliffs. In fact, it's about as flat as you can get here in Illinois. So we don't really worry about that. And I, I don't think it's a huge risk. So that's why. Because um, some kid might go like, well, that sounds cool. I want to try that. Can't do it here. Ha ha. Okay. So you're going to turn your question into a claim. I claim that cliff diving is a very bad choice. Three, you're going to brainstorm answers and look for what kind of support. Text support. Thank you. It's a good thing you know who is here. Text, text support. Because if you make a claim and then you start babbling about it, Bruce, and you don't use any text support, then you're just another kid with another idea. Okay? If you want, oh boy, I totally lost my, lost my movie here. Oh, it's still going. Okay, if you uh, make a claim, a claim, or if you make, you're, then you're just a kid with an idea. If you can't support it, you're just a nobody. No one's going to believe you. You're just another kid going like, I think it's a great idea. No one's going to believe you. Okay? So you have to support with text, textual evidence. And the best kind is the kind with quotations around it. Sometimes you can paraphrase. But if you really want to prove that you read it and prove to me that this part of the book exists, you, putting it in quotations is best. And we'll, again, we'll talk more about that. There's a really good example on the next page. Um, brainstorm answers and look for, oh, and textual support. We just did that. Choose four. Choose a minimum of blank pieces of support for your answer. Now, this is where it's going to get a little bit gray. I'm sorry, but it is. The ultimate in writing. What's the miracle number for writing? Three. 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 Thank you. Oh, yes. see how they learn things here. Oh, oh they said three. Okay, it's just funny. It's just funny. Okay, it's just funny. But yes, a writer should look for three pieces of textual support. And ultimately, that's what you need. Because you cannot sit on a chair with two legs. You need three to be really fully supported. However, however, and this is where it's going to get a little bit gray. Somebody said, do we have to write two of these in a night? Yes, sometimes you do. Sometimes, on some of the answers, three may be more than you're able to find. If you have two awesome sauce pieces of support, textual evidence, and you use it, and you have really fleshed out your answer, and it's reasonable, I, I'm not going to dock you in a big way for two pieces of support, simply because you can't always, for all of these answers, find three. That should certainly be your goal for this, for especially any high-stakes test when they're asking you to write. Always think three. It's a magical number in writing, OK? And then the last one is make an analytical statement. You should at the end, ultimately, see, here's the thing about writing. Here's the thing about writing. Here's why you write. You are writing these, these extended responses not for pain. You're writing them to become a better communicator. Here, you're saying to me, here, Mrs. Katz, I read this story and I comprehended it and I understood it at a very deep level. Two, I'm also a human being who has opinions and thoughts and I'm not like you. I'm not, my answer is not going to be the same as Hannah's or Selma's or Bruce's. My answer is going to be unique to me because I'm a human being. And here's what I think. So you're saying, yes, I can, I can understand. Yes, I have thoughts about this. And yes, I can support my answer. And then at the end, you're going to bring it on home with an analytical statement. You're going to say something that, is, that shows some judgment. 
That is why nobody should ever go cliff diving. Or that is why if you don't take risks in life, you haven't truly lived. Both are answers that are supportable, aren't they? I may not agree with it. So somebody in the, this morning, the morning class asked me something so amazing. They said to me, well, wait a minute. What if I write a really great answer, but you don't agree with it? What if it's wrong? And I said, you know what? I don't care how wrong I think you are. If you have proven yourself, if I don't agree with your answer, but you have proven yourself with support from the text and real life experience, I have given 100% A pluses to people whose ideas I did not agree with. As a matter of fact, that might even be a really good goal for you sometime during this book, is to write an answer you know I'm going to disagree with, but I have to give you such a good grade on it because you have proven to me as a writer that you can support your opinions. You're not just a kid with an idea. You can support it with evidence from the text, with evidence from your life, and you can make an analytical judge, judgment at the end that's, that would be pretty awesome. If you forced me to give you an A, wouldn't that be fun if you know I disagree with you? I think that would be, like, that would be great. Ha! Made her give me an A because I did such a great job. All right, that's all I'm going to put on the video. We can talk more about this later. So you better be in school on Monday. Mwah!